Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is going to be the first video in a series going over uh, everything about React. Basically, we're going to slowly over time kind of go over all of the, the core React stuff. Then we're going to go over using Nest.js and Gatsby.js and um, maybe even React Native down the road, you know, one step at a time. <clears throat> but in order to work in React, um, you do need Node. So the first thing you want to do is head over to nodejs.org and download Node. Okay, this is gonna basically give your computer the capabilities to be able to run, uh, a, create a React environment. And we're gonna kind of do it uh, the longer way so you can see how all the pieces fit together. And uh, just to kind of first give you a breakdown of what Node is. Node is a framework for creating single page applications. Now, single page application, the, the concept is this. Once upon a time, you had websites that Basically, when they wanted to have dynamic information, so like you're pulling information from a database, like think WordPress, where the blog post is in a database, um, in like a MySQL database on the server, and then you go to a blog post page, what's happening is that on the server, there's the WordPress theme that tells it, okay, here's the website, and here's where you put the blog post, and then the server goes in to the database, grabs the blog post, puts it with a template, says it is. So that template is being put together on the server every single time someone wants to see that website. So basically that template is being rendered over and over again. So you have two things happening, the fetching of the information from the database and the rendering of the template. The more things the server has to do, the longer this, the, the user who's receiving, you know, who's waiting for the website has to wait and they have to go through that process every time they go to another page on the website. So you go from blog post to blog post, that whole rendering process is happening over and over again. At the same time, that also is more intensive for the server, okay? So when you're paying for bandwidth, that means your server is doing more work and it ends up being more expensive to run a website that's also slower. So with single page applications, what people did is they said, okay, a server, you're not gonna do all this templating, rendering stuff. We're gonna have you just deliver information by creating an API. So we're just gonna create this sort of way for your website that's going to render in the front end, meaning in the browser, it's going to not mix the information before it gets sent to the user. We're going to send them the website. The whole website is going to be one big application that gets downloaded once. And then going forward, that application knows when to ask the server for just bits of information, grabs those bits of information they need. So there's small requests that happen less often. And the website runs faster because you're not having this sort of page refresh because it's all really one big application. React is one of the frameworks that lets you build that. On top of it, it's able to, what it does, it uses what's called a virtual DOM, which means it basically, when your browser grabs HTML, CSS from, you know, if I go to Google, Google's going to respond with the HTML, CSS to put google.com on my screen. Really what's happening is that your browser, let's say Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever, is reading those HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files and creating, it's basically think of it as like a blueprint to create your website. So there's actually like a living version of your website created from those files that's referred to as the document object, part of the document object model. So there's like a living, breathing version of your website. You, if you actually want to explore the document object model, like I'm in Chrome right now, you can hit Control Shift I and you can go to elements. And this is actually your document object. This is like all little pieces of it. It's a living, breathing object that can change. And you can actually play around with it from here and change stuff around if you really wanted to. Like, um, let's see here. Uh, what could I play with? Uh, let's play something with something that we can read. Two, 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 two. Home intro, just looking for some text that's on actually on the screen tags or have a look let's change this okay and you can actually change the screen I didn't change the HTML CSS and the JavaScript if I refresh the page it's gonna read that HTML CSS and JavaScript again and it's gonna go back to normal because it's gonna create a whole new document object that's unaltered okay so it'll refresh and it'll go back to normal because see it's gonna read it and create a new document object so what React does, it says, you know what? Before we change the actual DOM that the user is seeing, we need to make sure there's actual changes. And instead of changing the whole thing, we're only going to change parts of it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create another DOM, a virtual DOM, so another a second copy that's living and breathing, and monitor it for changes. And only when changes happen to that virtual DOM does it then go back and only make those changes to the live DOM that the user is seeing on the screen. You don't really need to understand how that all works to use React, but just so you can really understand sort of what made it so revolutionary and what makes it so cool. This idea of a virtual DOM, which now pretty much is standard in, in many of these frameworks. So that's sort of the big deal. Now, how do we set up a React project? So I have a folder for React projects right over, oh, do, 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 Q, R, S, uh, that's the one that's highlighted, that would make sense. So I created a folder called Tutorial. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna wanna open a, an instance of Terminal. Um, I, I've added Terminal functionality into my Atom. If you're using Visual Studio Code, uh, I used a note, an Atom package called Termination to have access to the to the terminal in my my Atom. If you're using Visual Studio Code, is that's built in from the get go, and um, there probably is some sort of package or something to add that functionality. To Sublime, I haven't really used Sublime that much recently. Okay, but basically, what you would do is that in this folder, which I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again, but just to show you. I would head over to this folder, so I type in cd for change directory, paste, I go to that folder, and then what I would do is I would type in npm init. This would create a new npm project. I would actually do npm init dash y. The dash y helps you skip all the little questions it's going to ask you. And that's going to create a new npm project. That essentially creates this package.json file, which tells Node these are the different things that you're using. So notice that here I have certain dependencies. React and React DOM. I actually don't need those right now. So I'm actually going to delete that. Okay. And I'm going to delete this node modules folder because I don't need that right now. And you'll see why. Okay. But theoretically, as I install stuff, so if I, I did want to go reinstall React, I would just hit npm i for install and then type in React. And then I would do the same thing for React DOM but we're going to use what's called a CDN. So I'm going to save this. Okay. Theoretically, if I left those dependencies in there and I deleted that node modules folder, I could just type in npm i, just that. It would go look in this package JSON folder for my dependency section and say, hey, there's all these dependencies and they're not installed. So let me go install them for you and it would just bring it all back. Okay. So the only way you have to make sure you kind of remove it from there so that way it's completely gone. Although you can just not do what I just did and delete it manually, you can just type in npm uninstall and then be like uninstall react or whatever. And it'll do it for you. So we're going to create, I need you to create two files, an index.html. And in that index.html, we're going to bring in React through a CDN. <clears throat> and we need, a CDN is a content delivery network. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to be bringing in a remote version of React and we're going to be bringing it in through a JavaScript call from the front end in the browser. And they, these are going to have to be in this order. So you really want your first, you want your React, and there's two React libraries, React and React DOM. Okay, so you want those in there. You can get the newest version by heading over to the React <coughs> uh, documentation. Okay, so you just head over to reactjs.org, look at the docs, look for the CDN links, and you're just going to copy those two links. Okay. Um, cool. And you would just copy them right in here like that. Then we need Babel. Now what Babel is, it's a, what happens is that React is using what's called ES6. It's the newest version of, or new-ish version of JavaScript. The thing is that browsers don't understand all of ES6's new features because browsers move a little slower than JavaScript and the programming languages change. So what Babel does, it'll take your code that's using the newest version of JavaScript and, and then translate it back to an older version so that way browsers can understand it. Because otherwise, the React code just won't work. But your browser doesn't know that you brought in Babel to translate anything. So it's like, okay, thank you for bringing it in. So you can just head over to CDN.js, look for the Babel CDN, copy it over. Okay, but once you have Babel in there, that's what you need. So again, you need React first, then Babel, 
and then you can bring in your JavaScript file. So in this case, index.js. Okay, and then you have to make sure you have this type text babel that tells the browser that, oh, okay, this babel library that you just brought in a second ago, because this has text babel, babel's gonna translate this file or what's in this file so that way you can use it. So that's what this is. Okay, and this defer keyword, just make sure that your script doesn't run until after the website's loaded. So that way, because sometimes your JavaScript can move faster than your website and that causes issues. So I always just put in that defer keyword on my JavaScript file. And then you put in this little piece here, you're gonna put in a div. It could really be any element you want, but you're just gonna give it the ID root. And you can give it any ID you want. This is just sort of standard convention. And literally you're pretty much done with your, your uh, index.html for the most part. But one last piece I'm gonna add in here, I'm just gonna put in a title, Alex Merced's React site. Yay. Cool. <clears throat> so this is essentially going to be the container where React is going to inject itself. That's why it's called the root. And this is pretty much, say, bon voyage to your index.html. We won't be seeing this for a very long time. So you're going to head over to index.js. And we're going to basically, we don't, we, if we were importing it from Node, okay, using the package JSON and it had the Node modules folder, then you would need to import React at the top of this file. Import React from React, import React DOM from React DOM, because we need to bring it in from your node modules. But because we brought it in as a CDN over here, we're not gonna need to do that, okay? Which doing it through the node way is probably gonna be better when you're doing much bigger projects, but this is just for teaching purposes. Okay, so, but basically the React DOM library provides this function here called react dom .render. What this does, it says, hey, we want you to, pu to publish or inject this, so in this case, just an h1 tag, where this is. And this just basically says, hey, whatever, ele whatever the element we find with the ID root, but that was that div that we created. So this is what kickstarts your uh, React project. <clears throat> okay, so react dot dom render, hello world, document dot, get element by root. That's it. Now you could put HTML here. You can only put one parent tag. So if I were to put multiple tags, they have to be like wrapped in a div. Um, bottom line is whenever you, this is what's referred to as JSX. So things like JavaScript um, extra, where you're allowed to put in HTML. So instead of having to do really crazy DOM manipulation through code like this, you can just put the HTML right in there. Very cool. But you'll see, we're gonna be doing something a little bit more fancy than that as we go on in these, this, this video series. So I'm gonna hit save and let's just take a look. So basically this should just say hello world on the screen. But here's the thing, if I actually open it up right now, it won't work. So let me go open it up. Oh, show in file manager. Boop, let's open it up in Chrome. And see, it's just a blank file. The reason is it's not, you need a server, like actually just to show you what's happening, let's do control shift I. Because a lot of times I know I struggle with this, like trying to understand why it doesn't work between one version versus the other. But if you've seen the console, the reason it's not working is because of this error here. Okay, it's not, it doesn't want to let you access your index.js because it's all confused based on all these other things that you brought in. And it's like, no, you're having this course policy issue. How do you avoid that? Well, you need a server, okay? You need an actual server running. And a really good tool for that is Light Server. So actually I'm gonna, well, yeah, we're gonna, so you're gonna want Light Server, okay? So theoretically you can just install that by typing in npm i light server. Um, and then you can install it globally which is what I recommend, so that we just have it accessible for all your projects. I put a dash G for global, but let me just make sure we got the exact command. Just turn this off so we don't see all these errors in everyone's websites. 
okay so this is where's the global one here we go that's kind of what you're going to want to do npm install global light server that means you just have it everywhere so basically all i have to do is anytime i'm in a folder and i want to queue up a so server i just type in light server so that's going to queue up light server it'll tell me what port it's on in a second so I'll just give it a moment to load up and then we'll actually be able to view the page cool okay there we go so it says it's accessible and then that's about to open up so yay and there you go there's our hello world because see now it's working the server helps all those that like the babble and all that stuff all work so there you go you've set up your react project and you've put out your first bit of react code by publishing hello world i'll be doing some more exciting stuff in the next video um, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure to head over to my website, alexmercedcoder.com. That way you can find all the stuff about me, see my projects, um, join the dev networking Slack, so that way you can meet other developers. And, you know, one of the best ways to get ahead is, and also just to get good feedback and find mentorship and help others is through networking. So please do join that Slack channel. And, uh, yeah my podcast, my LinkedIn, all that stuff you'll find here as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Enjoy.